just something pretty to look at. What? Move <laughs> over a little bit. I'm trying to. <laughs> but I gotta get a hold so, of something. We're, we're sitting here watching the uh, count of our subscribers. And I'm going to show you this. It's 9,998. So we're sitting here waiting for 10,000. You going to kiss me? Don't start that again. <laughs> huh? Huh? Every time we sit here on this couch, you get ideas. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. 9,999. Let me see all the nines. Oh, wow. Come on, well, sign up. Come you know, on. You, you know, it's possible that some people quit. It could go down. No, don't do that. Okay. Come on. Are we going to get up and do a little dance? I might do my, my little song that I do for Roger. Which one? Oh. 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 <laughs> no, don't do it. Don't no, do no, it. Don't. I, I will, That's mine. I maybe will. I'll put it up here and it'll change as they're watching it. Come on, change. This is kind of like when I was sitting in the hospital waiting for you to have Peter. <laughs> that doesn't sound like sitting. You better get that tooth filed a little bit more. What? <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> I said, uh, no. come on, who wants to be 10,000? Oh, 10,000! I didn't see it. 10,000! Whoop de doo! That's all my own whoop de doo song. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, 10,000 subscribers! <laughs> And surprise, surprise, in my morning email, a notice from YouTube congratulating us on 10,000 subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed and you want to, here's a card. Click that card to join the fun. And for those 10,000 of you who have already subscribed, I appreciate that. I am moved. I am motivated. You have no idea what it means to have 10,000 people say they like you and they want to hear some more. And I can tell you that I have only just begun to say a whole lot about things that are on my mind today. Hello, YouTube. Today I thought I'd talk about some of the questions I get over and over again. Um, so let's pick this one. Uh, enjoy your videos. Could you mention in your videos how you handle your money there? Seems like I don't get to handle it enough. It just slips right through my fingers. Do you use your credit card and is there an exchange rate charge? And what about cash? Do you, and how do you know the exchange rates? Uh, how do I know the exchange rate? I use an online um, service called XE, that's just the letters XE.com. And if you go there, you can um, get the current exchange rate by the hour for uh, the difference between any currency in the world. So I have mine set for dollars and pesos. And that's how I know what the exchange rate is um, in the international banking system if I'm trying to check and see if I got a good exchange rate or not. Uh, and how do I check and see if I got a good one? Well, I go to xe.com and I get what the exchange rate should be, and then I look at what I got. And you do that by taking the pesos on your um, uh, cash register receipt from the store you were at, or how many pesos you got out of an ATM. And it's very simple. You just look on your bank record then, which I also do online, and see if I got 7,000 pesos and I, it was $351, well the exchange rate was whatever that is. 
uh, would be about 18.8, I think. Anyway, that's how we do it. You take how many pesos you spent or received and divide by how many dollars came out of your bank. It's that simple. Uh, unless you carry your own cash through the border, and by the way, you're limited to $10,000 in the U.S. border, or you get in big trouble. Uh, unless you're carrying your own cash, you do a banking transfer, whether it's a wire transfer or ATM withdrawal, um, you're going to pay a bank for doing that exchange. And usually, um, that's a, a relatively small amount that the bank kind of skims off of the middle of the transaction. And I'm not complaining about that. That's how banks make money. It's perfectly fine. So if the exchange rate at the time is 19 pesos to $1 and I get it out of the ATM machine, maybe I'm going to get 18.8. Or if I use my debit card, um, I might get 18.8. So if, um, if you're living on $1,000 a month and you're getting it out of an ATM all the time, 18.8, that's 18, that's two. 100 pesos a month that you'd be spending just to transfer your money from dollars to pesos. And you're going to pay that no matter what. When I was first down here, uh, nobody took credit cards. There were a few places like Costco, and they would only take an American Express. Walmart and Sam's Club up in Guadalajara, they would take a credit card. But none of the places around here at uh, Lakeside would take a credit card because 18 years ago, it was much more difficult for a merchant to take a credit card. They had to have um, a, a telephone line and a special setup. Now, with the internet, merchants can have this little machine, and it's wireless, or it can even do it with a phone, that they can take a credit card. So, even at the Tiangas, the street marks, market, some places they'll take a credit card now. But, uh, 18 years ago, it was all cash, so we had to figure out how are we going to get cash all the time. Here's what we did. We got a Mexican bank account, and yes, you can get a Mexican bank account as a foreigner. It's not as easy as it was 18 years ago because the IRS changed some of the banking laws in the United States. And uh, now banks have to report if you have over $10,000 in a foreign bank account and there are some other regulations but anyway uh, foreign banks are now a little more hesitant to give uh, uh, foreigners or not foreigners US citizens a foreign bank account doesn't mean you can't do it doesn't mean it won't happen doesn't mean you can't but it's not necessary like it used to be the reason that we did it was because if we got an ATM and we, check, and, and we got out, you know, a, a few thousand pesos and paid a $3 ATM machine charge, that was part of it. And the other part of it was an international transaction fee. That's called ISA. It's the international transaction fee that a bank charges to convert your dollars to pesos or to make it currency exchange. And if you used a credit card or um, uh, even to get money out of an um, ATM, they made this charge. Now, credit unions in the United States used to charge 1%, and uh, commercial banks charged 3%, and it's still a 3% going rate. So we had a Mexican bank account, and we transferred more than you could get out of an ATM at a time because it was less expensive to pay a 40 or $50 dollar a wire transfer fee into a Mexican bank account, and then the local bank right here by the plaza in Ajijic, I could go down there with my Mexican ATM card and make a, a, a no-fee withdrawal from my own account at my own Mexican bank. Well, it's not necessary anymore, and I don't, I don't anymore recommend that uh, expats get a Mexican bank account. Uh, well, let's, let me tell you what I do now, and I've done it this way for a couple of years. All 
Also, people used to have their social security checks deposited in their Mexican bank account for the same reason, because they could save the international transaction fees. And if you're living on $1,000 a month, and there's a 3% fee, plus there's always that override in the exchange rate, you're paying uh, 4 or $5 per hundred, or 4 or 5% of your, and that adds up to a lot of money if you're living on $1,000 a month. It adds up to four times $480 a year. And uh, if you're living on $1,000 a month, that's, that's a half a month's paycheck. So it was important to know how to um, uh, manage your money uh, back then. It's still important, but we do it differently. Now, with online banking, my Social Security check goes to a bank in the United States. It's an automatic deposit. I then transfer that by internet with my iPad to um, an online Capital One 360 checking account. And then I access that cash through an ATM. So the Capital One account, and I'm not recommending Capital One, uh, there's lots of them that do that. Les Schwab has accounts that you can do that. There's lots of online banking things now that will help you avoid paying ATM fees and international transaction fees. And if you're living in a foreign country and your, your, your money is coming in as dollars in the United States or Canada, and you're going to be living and spending all your money in pesos and making your entire life a um, currency exchange situation, you need to pay attention to this. Um, I use the example of $1,000 a month. Well, multiply that by how many thousands a month you think you're going to spend. What was I talking about? Oh, so I transfer my Social Security check from the U.S. bank that it's deposited in to my online Capital One 360 checking account. And then for that online checking account, I have a debit card or an ATM card. And so, for the cash that I need, um, I get cash out of an ATM, and I'm still paying that override in there, um, so I'm not avoiding that, but because it's also a debit card, and a lot of places now can accept a debit or a credit card, I use it as a debit card. So if I go to Walmart, um, I pay with my debit card, and the point is that I'm not having to use so much cash because it costs money to get cash and it doesn't cost, there's no fee for using it as um, a debit card with that Capital One card. That's how I do it and uh, it works out very well for me not to be um, supporting a bank in the United States by doing my monthly spending living in a foreign country. I hope that helps. Um, it's not complicated, but if you haven't ever done it before or thought about it before, I understand that it's a question that comes up in people's mind. Anyway, hope that helps. Let's look at another one. I'm going to like answering this one. It would be nice if you spoke about how people over there are over there would be here in Mexico, um, are treating you. Considering the way Mexicans are treated in the United States, it would be nice to know if you are treated differently over there by Mexicans. What they do, how you live, I'm... I'm going to do a video about uh, education in America and how many Americans can't put a sentence together. Do you interact with the Mexicans on a private level? Do you have friends that are Mexican? Thank you very much for your video. I have a lot of Mexican friends and they are very, very, very good friends. My some of my best friends are Mexicans, and some of my nicest friends are Mexicans. 
My buddy Jesus, whom you've seen in some of my videos, if you've looked at some of my older ones, um, I just want to say he's my best friend in Mexico, and he and I sit on the couch and talk, and I practice my Spanish. Um, Jesus is, uh, well, he's poor, and he's the, he's just, but he's a great friend. I mean, I don't want to get all emotional about it, but you couldn't have a better friend. Enough said. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.